Oh, hey guys, this is Packer Night, Ryan Debar. It's another weekend, it's another journey. I'm in Nuremberg. Yesterday morning, I was walking up the hill of Nuremberg Castle, and I was thinking, what are you gonna do tonight? You gonna read a book? You gonna go to sleep? You gonna make a video? If you make a video, what would you even talk about? I had no idea. I started going through the museum and the castle, and learning of the importance of this place in Germany's history, I had no idea. But then I get to the section about World War II and I saw the extreme damage to the city, and to the castle, and then how the Germans immediately set, set about fixing things. And it took them until the early 1960s to get most of the castle fixed and it wasn't completely redone until the early 1980s. I was thinking about how much money that had to be at a time when they did not have the money that they have today. We always hear in the United States, in Clarksburg, we can't repair these buildings. We can't maintain these buildings. Old things are too expensive. And yet the Germans, the Europeans in general, took money that they really didn't have to preserve their culture and their history. You've seen that grandstand before. You've seen it in videos and pictures of Nazi rallies. There used to be a large swastika above it that the Americans blew up in 1945. Nazis had their annual meeting in Nuremberg for a reason. It was very important to the cult of Nazism and to Nazi ideology. Adolf Hitler saw himself as the next Charlemagne. Charlemagne took the Frankish kingdom from an area kind of along the Rhine River and pushed east and north, conquered various tribes, German, Celtic tribes, converted them forcibly to Christianity, Germanized them, and that's exactly what Hitler wanted to do to the Poles, to the Czechs, to you know, Belarusians, Ukrainians. And as Nuremberg was the primary capital of the Holy Roman Empire, he saw it as a, the kernel of the next iteration of the Thousand Year Reich. You know, um, Holy Roman Empire lasted a thousand years. He thought the Nazi reign would last a thousand years. Nuremberg has sunk a lot of money into fixing up their castle, their churches, their bridges, the old town, the medieval city walls. They have 80 to 90% of their medieval city walls still. And they have a moat in, in parts of it. That's impressive, and it's what I came here to see. I did not come here to see a lot of Nazi stuff. I drew a circle around the place that I live, and I was like, you know, what are the near largest towns that are near to me? And then I'll expand as I get opportunity. And while I was here seeing the other stuff, I had a couple extra hours before it got dark. So I took the bus out there to see the Nazi stuff. And I think that's probably what most people do. And city of Nuremberg's reluctantly come to accept that it's, it's something interesting that people will want to see. And so they've developed or are working on developing a, a, a way to market that in a, in a manner that doesn't glorify it. They have a museum that talks explicitly about the dark path, past and the hard truths of fascism, Nazism, white supremacy, etc., etc. There's a lesson here for Clarksburg. If you really want to revitalize the downtown, you would invest more into the good cultural assets that you have. First and foremost, the Waldo Hotel. There's thousands of Canadians that come down that Highway 79 every summer, every day, to go to Disney World, and they want to stay in central West Virginia because it puts them within a day's drive of Orlando. And some number of them will prefer to stay in a historic hotel because there are people like that. I'm like that. I'd rather be downtown in a historical setting than out some flea bag motel paying $140 a night alongside the freeway. 
I know people think it needs to be a casino to attract people. I'm not sure because it's just the demand that's already there. If you were to have a 100-room hotel in there, even at 50% capacity and one and a half people per room, you'd be getting 75 people into your downtown every night. 27,000 a year. Have you ever drawn that much with Civil War tourism? No. But if you get those people down there, some of them will divert their time a little bit into seeing the History Museum and the seeing the statue and the patronizing local businesses. That's the path forward. It hasn't happened. Well, Vandalia tried its hardest, and there's political reasons behind that personal reasons behind that. But it's time to rethink things. I mean, it's, it's your town. Do you want your town to succeed or do you not? I'll hire you later.